What is going on, everyone? If you're watching this, then the ghosts of Tokyo have taken me. Please delete internet history. Nah. Obviously, if you're here, you know that I'm Rack or and Bar. I'm making this video to give you an idea of what Ghost Park Tokyo really is. Thanks to Bethesda and Tango Games. They were kind enough to gift me a copy, a PS5 preview copy ahead of release. So a big, big thank you to them. Um, just a quick brief summary of me. I had a PR side for Streamer House, uh, my own variety of games of streaming, my health, taking care of my son, um, some game testing here and there. And of course, more recently, I've been trying to get into uh, game reviewing and such. So as I say, please smash, you know how that goes, the like button, subscribe, or even share the videos. It'll help immensely with upcoming projects that I'm working on. I haven't done videos in a while, so my video editing scale is pretty terrible. I'm at best noob. Uh, I apologize ahead of time for any shortcomings with the video. More than likely, they are my fault, not the games. So if you see anything, please let me know. I'll try to address it the best I can. Um, right now, it's 7 a.m. I've been awake. I've been grinding, trying to learn things, etc., and get this out. So I apologize ahead of time. I hope you enjoy the preview of the game. Uh, let me also say it is only based on Chapter 1 and 2, and just the beginning of them, uh, not what the full game will have. There will be patch and patches before launch, or by launch, I should say. Uh, my copy is the full game. However, um, I only did a small portion, and I'm showing that small portion. Um, I try to keep things fairly short, but I also try to cover most things that people would have questions on, more details, stuff like that. Please leave a like or a comment below, but enough of all this. Let's get in to Ghostwire Tokyo. This would be the main game menu options for languages. This is the options for controls and sensitivities and such like that. Next is the UI menu. Here is the graphics options for the game, which includes a quality mode, which is a high fidelity rendering mode with ray tracing enabled, 30 FPS limit. You can definitely tell when that is on. Performance mode is a 60 FPS limit, which is pretty smooth, no problems really there. There's also a high frame rate mode that is an uncapped frame rate and tweaks the graphic quality that allow for an even higher frame rate experience. I didn't really notice too much of a difference between the performance mode and high frame rate when it comes to quality or that much when it came to frame rate. I, I was pretty much playing on high frame rate for the most part. Here are the colorblind options here that have three different types as well as multiple strengths that go up to 10. Here are the different difficulties for starting Ghostwire Tokyo. You have easy, normal, hard, and Tatari. You can kind of see the differences here. Tatari is for players who enjoy split second decisions being the difference between life and death. XP rewards will be set to zero, and you'll be unable to change the difficulty without starting a new game. However, the other difficulties you are allowed to change at any time. Ghostwire Tokyo is an action-adventure video game developed by Tango Gameworks, which did the Evil Within series. It's being published by Bethesda Softworks for PlayStation 5 and Microsoft Windows via the Epic Games launcher as well as the Steam launcher. There is also an early access to it with the Deluxe Edition that gives you three days early access starting on March 22nd. The official release date is March 25th. It is on the Unreal Engine 4, and Kenji Kimura is the director of it. The standard edition of the game is $60 and comes with just the base game. The deluxe edition is $80 and comes with the little outfit pack, as well as some other little perks, as well as a three-day early access, making the game playable on March 22nd. The premise of the game is Tokyo is overrun by a deadly supernatural force or forces uh, perpetrated by dangerous occultists, causing Tokyo's population to vanish in an instant. Uh, you'll see an ally right away that is a powerful spectral entity, and they are on a vengeance quest, basically, with the protagonist of the game, which you'll learn as you go through the story. There will be a lot that this video doesn't touch on, as this is just kind of an intro into the game. The Spectral Entity starts the game at war with you, as you can see here, and you will need to solve that. You'll need to master the game's powerful arsenal abilities to unravel the dark truth behind the disappearance of everyone in Tokyo. We're going to go through some of the starting items and mechanics that are shown to you in the tutorial for Ghostwire Tokyo here. 
This is the hazardous fog you'll find all over Tokyo in which you will need to clear out in order to survive. These are the yellow ether crystals you'll find in little pots or like little lucky cats that you can break in order to give you mecha or gold or money basically. Just a quick example of some of the items you can find around Tokyo. These are the Katahiro that you will find and unlock, which are incredibly important, and you use them to absorb spirits around Tokyo in order to deposit in these transmission devices. This talks about the corruption with the spirits as well as your spectral vision. These are the really cool hand seals that have all different uses in the game that later in the video there will be an example. Here's the grappling mechanic that is with the Tengu that you can find and or summon with skills later on. And this talks about the side missions of the game as you progress. This is just a quick look at the fire weaving portion of the elements that you can use. They're really awesome and you'll see more in the video later. Here we have the Omakuji which gives you a temporary buff that you can find around the map. And a quick little clip showing how it works and what it does. I thought it was a pretty cool little addition, and just seeing the animations from it, as well as the little rollout there, I think is pretty awesome. Not too bad. Here we have the offering system, which I was only able to test once, and I'm pretty sure it failed. However, I'm not 100% sure. It's basically a wishing well that you donate a certain amount and pick a wish, and I guess you pretty much get or don't get it. It was kind of a little funny interaction, and I'm looking forward to seeing how crazy these can really get. Oops, didn't come true. This talks really quick about the cleansing of large shrines and how it opens up the map more and opens up new shops, etc. Here we have a quick example of the Magatama, which you'll use in your skill tree, which I'll show a little bit more later on in the video as well. These cute little statues will give you a permanent increase to your SP, and they are incredibly useful, and you will need to look for them all the time. Next up, we're going to look at the map, some NPCs, the shops, as well as some other interesting gameplay things and mechanics. This is the map as I could see it in the game, and I was not far at all in the game whatsoever. However, you can see very easily that the map seems quite expansive, as well as a lot of the buildings, pretty much all the buildings, are traversal, as well as multi-level uh, for rooftops and so on and so forth with Tengu. So there's a lot to explore. As you can see here, this would be a yokai shop. Uh, they are uh, rather interesting and they uh, sell quite a few things. This is a quick snippet of the vending machines you can find around the map that sell some quick food for you as well. Here we have a quick look at the Nekomata relic requests that will give you uh, different rewards, whether it's money or outfits when you complete them. This is the game's camera mode that you can use those outfits as well as other little cool things. Of course, the game wouldn't be complete if it didn't have some cats and other pets in it. And uh, found out really quick that you can uh, talk to the animals <laughs> as well as hear them and communicate with them. Here we have the dog, and of course, you can pet them and the cats as well as the dogs actually give you uh, rewards when you feed them. Uh, sometimes, of course. I believe the cats do as well. Of course, I'm super excited and happy that they included this kind of stuff in the game, as it's always great to see this kind of stuff. And you can see him digging here to give me uh, my reward for feeding him. Here we have the tanuki of the game, or raccoons. Uh, you'll find them around giving you little missions. You can talk to them as well as you can see. I'm talking to them right now. And they will... Uh, have little things for you to do. Uh, you'll find their little buddies. This guy wanted me to find his friends, which was like transmogged into like a little pot with a tail sticking out. So it was rather interesting. And of course, here is, you know, the completion of the mission and his little voice lines. All right, let's get into the good stuff. The skill tree, the mechanics, and the gameplay. I will try to be quiet other than me going through the skill tree here. Hopefully you enjoy what you're about to see.
What the... Ed built these things. Hold that Katashiro up to it. Any spectral vision, gliding, gliding boosts. Um... Grapple for summoning Tengus, uh, something dealing with pets or cats, obviously. Um, faster sneaking, uh, ether shakedowns, perfect block, ether generation boosts, ground core grabs, ground core speed boosts, ground attack boosts, melee core grabs, um, the core grab speed boosts, core exposure duration boosts, oops, uh, HP restoration on the core grabs. Beard absorption speed boosts, and of course, um, these need uh, Magatamas to uh, further or unlock the ability to go further into the tree. Um, you have the Ethereal Weaving Tree, which is dealing with the different elements. Um, you've got Wind Weaving with speed boosts. You've got uh, more shots on the wind attacks. You've got the Water with more shots. Um, with boosts on the water attacks, you've got fire using piercing, radius explosion boosts, and so forth, and range boosts. Um, speed boosts and charge attacks uh, increase on them as well. You also have the equipment tab, which is talismans. Uh, you got the bow and arrows, the quiver boosts and such. Talismans, I'm not sure if I actually put a clip in the video of that or not at this point. I've been working on it all day, so um, these there's like little stun uh, talismans that you kind of throw on the ground and stuns boss like little mini bosses or enemies around it for a certain amount of time. There's a speed boost for drawing of the bow. Um, not sure what that is. Um, consumables capacity boosts. That one just obviously gives you more uh, consumables. Consumables obviously do give you certain amounts of health, depending on what they are. That's a really big cucumber. Um, so depending on what they are, they will give you different amounts of food and health and, and stuff like that. Uh, drinks kind of basically do the same thing. They've got like little flavor text on them and such. Spectral food will give you different buffs when you pop them. Um, you'll find them just kind of floating out in the world or buy them and so forth. There is um, different outfit items, which you'll also get depending on your pre-order and all that kind of stuff, too. You can change different colors and stuff. You'll see it in the, um, the selfie camera thing that you can mess with. Um, different little music clips and stuff that you can play. There's a stun talisman, as you can see there. Uh, different items, depending on what they do. Dog food, I'm, you can see in the video and such. Some of these, I'm not sure if they do anything yet. Uh, I try to avoid going too far to spoil too many things for myself and for my community as well. So, um, there's still quite a bit, I'm sure, that can be, you know, hashed out in the game that I haven't experienced. So this is definitely, absolutely not anywhere near, you know what you'll see in the entire game or anything like that. I've literally only done a small portion of chapter one and a very small portion of chapter two, so. Um, more info, landmarks, voice logs, relics, you know, basic kind of stuff there. And uh, that's pretty much it. What's happening? We're getting more underworld interference because of the barrier. It's gonna crush us if we don't do something about it.
That was crazy. Hopefully you enjoyed everything I covered. If you could like the video, subscribe, and or leave a comment, it'd be awesome. A uh, big thank you to Tango Gameworks as well as Bethesda for allowing me this opportunity. And hopefully you guys can drop by either the stream or the next video on the next project that I'm working on. Remember, only I hold the key to these souls' salvation. Now stand aside.